Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we're having our second hot topic. We're talking about the clampdown on BDC operators will worsen the forex situation. And that was being said by the presidential candidate for the Labour Party, Peter Obi. Joining me to discuss this is Mukta Mohamed. He's an international finance and economics analyst. He's joining us from Lagos State. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay, so I'm sure you've already heard the news um, when um, Peter Obi made this statement that this will worsen um, the forex situation in the country. You are an economic analyst. What do you think about this? What do you think about the statement? And do you think it is true that this might just worsen where we are currently as a nation? Well, it depends on which angle it is coming from. Um, if you talk about regulation, if it's a war regulation, then it will not worst in it. But what we are now, we say security apparatus going after the really change operator. And that is not the solution to the problem. The solution to the problem is not going after the really change operator. The solution to the problem is supply. So um, if you are going to the period change um, operator because you want to improve supply, then you will definitely have it. But if you are going for them because you feel they are speculators, they are hoarding, then you 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 worsen the situation like um, uh, Peter will be said. Because what it means is that there are a, um, a segment of the economy that this BDC normally um, uh, um, service, and so when you go after them, they will go under. And when they go on that, those sectors that the service will still look for them, but now things will be, it will be scarce. It will be more expensive because scarcity of a product makes demand for that product. When there's scarcity of a product and the demand for that product is high, then the cost of that product will go up and the rate of that product will go up. So if, you, if it's by that, it is, if that's the reason why uh, um, the EFCC or the, uh, the security apparatus are going for after them, I think um, it's going to worsen the situation. But if we are going after them as a record that, okay, they are not abiding to some regulation, they have to abide by the regulation, like what the CBN said now, no more street hoarding, no more street trading. And you are not saying, okay, we don't want to see anybody in the street, but you can maintain your operation on the copy of your office, you've got your license, then that could sanitize the, the sector. So it's all based on what um, they are really after. Um, and for me, uh, if if um, a sector that could not be regulated when they could be found on, on the street and in their office decide to go under, how will you regulate them? The same security apparatus that are going after them well, didn't go after them when they were all over the street. Uh, when it was, it was more or less like street hockey now. Even when you ban hockey in places like Lagos, they ban street hockey. Nobody banned it really change from hockey in dollars. You see them all over and closer to the banks, to, through, uh, in, in the bank branches. Nobody banned them. So definitely, um, we must be serious when we want to deal with issues that have to do with economies. We shouldn't just think that uh, we could just wait the biscuit. Economic issues are only resolved by economics policy, not by security threats. Hmm. Okay, so what are some potential um, effects that you think this can have on the stability of our Nigerian economy? Because you're already talking about economic reforms and solutions. But what the fact that there, there's this clampdown on all of the BDCs, is there a potential effect that it would just have that would impact us negatively, um, our financial situation at the moment? Yes, it is. There's a big negative effect, like um, Peter Abi said. If you come down on them and they go under, and uh, scarcity comes in, and you are not able to meet supply, then definitely you, you create a, a distortion in the economy, and then the, the, the rate will keep going up. <laughs> because the, the prior market is part of the financial market. The speculators are always part of the market. So no matter how much the government has been saying, oh, speculators are the ones sabotage. So, but the speculators are always part of the financial market. The side and the government realize that they are part of the financial markets. Uh, any market in the world, whether the equity market, you have speculators. They come in there to speculate, to, to make money. So they are all out there to make money. So what you do is that you come up with a better policy that gets them, that causes panic. And once panic comes in, speculators tend to get their finger bone and they, they, they will have to readjust. Then you will be the winner. So going after speculators with um, um, security threat or going after them using security apparatus will not solve the problem. You need to come up policy and the policy that need to stabilize the economy now is boost supply of liquidity in the fx market boost it and how are you going to do it 
You number one, you have to do it with clear cut policy that are, are not detriment to the economy. Uh, policy when you come on and tell me that I cannot repatriate some of my funds out of the shore of this country after 19 days is not going to help the economy because that means foreign direct investors or foreign portfolio investors mm -hmm. will not be so excited to come to your market because you are going to restrict them, restrict them in their movement of their funds. And when they are coming, you didn't restrict them. And when they are going now, you are not restricting them. They won't come in. So what you need to do is bring in policy that will create a friendly invest investment um, uh, environment. Once there's a friendly investment environment, uh, foreign direct investors, portfolio investors will come and you boost liquidity. Increase OSS, like what we are beginning to see. Let there be more revenue, more uh, uh, efforts into the economy through oil. Uh, then get a product, and call Nigeria in the diaspora to make more remittance back into the uh, economy. That also will help. The non oil sector, try to give them the infrastructure so that they can grow. This will also will be part of those that are earning FX in the economy. Because as it stands today, according to the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, 93% of the, I mean, 97% of, of, of the growth we saw in the, in the GDP was driven by the non oil sector. But when you look at their contribution in terms of FX into the economy, it's not even up to, uh, up, not even up to 30%. So we need to do more to boost uh, 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 investment inflow into the country. Okay, so what are some alternative reforms um, or policies that you think the government can introduce to, and because, I mean, you've just said it, going over um, this BDCs might not just be the best thing right now, depends on how you look at it, but what are the alternative, you've mentioned some, but what are some other alternative reforms or policies that you think the government can introduce that will start to see the effect even from here on the other side, the masses, because it's okay for you to put it on paper and say, you know what, this is what we're going to do, this, we're going, this is what we're going to do, but what are the things that we would actually see, the masses would see and say, yes, at least now, the Naira is being stabilized, the dollar is not as high as it used to be, and everybody's happy. Yeah, no, 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 and I think the first thing they have to do, they have to look at the import duties. Mm. Um, no, nobody seems to be talking about that. Everybody is so concerned about the um, late, because Nigeria is an economy that we, we import virtually um, everything we eat. So even what we wear, even what uh, what we drive, we virtually import them into this country. And that sector is an informal sector, is a key driver of the Nigerian economy, either in terms of FX inflow and also in terms of um, in, in, in terms of employment. So what I think government should be forced to stabilize the and we see the now is you must begin to think about how you can um, put a fixed rate. If you say your Naira is under, 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 uh, under value, then let's see the true value of the Naira in your import duty charges. You say, look, this is, this is the true value of my Naira, and this is what we are going to be charging for import duty. That will first of all drive down inflation. Once inflation is driven down, then they could then you begin to talk about currency stability. That is one. Secondly, you must come up with a product that could attract Nigeria in the diaspora. I keep saying Nigeria in the diaspora. They were the key driver of the Nigerian economy at a point in time. So you must come up with a policy that will need to improve the Nigeria in the diaspora. And I'm very, very confident that if that policy comes into play, then we could have stability, maybe coming partner with the diaspora commission. At, in 2018, the inflow from the Nigeria in the diaspora was more than what we earned in terms of oil revenue. How can we begin to attract them? The COVID-19 pandemic is all they are, they are now working and sending uh, inflow into the country. Then again, the government also must turn down on illegal, um, uh, illegal what we call illegal transfer agents, uh, either through the app system or whatever. They need to clamp down on them because they also seem to be some of the problems that are busy uh, putting up each other, speculating, and most Nigerians now see them as the people that have the true value of the exchange instead of the CBN. I, I think that is another thing that we need to do in the short term. And then again, in the short term, the CBN must begin to think of how to meet up their debt obligation. They say they have about two point something billion left. They need to also engage the airlines, the international airlines company that have not been able to remit, remit, uh, remit uh, repatriate their funds back to their country. And also in doing that, you must not just give them the funds, you must also come there with condition. If you have to um, collect, um, have your return, then you need to make those portals that mean Nigerians to get available to cheap uh, air ticket to, to come back. You can't just be giving them money, and also you're not giving them conditions. Because as it stands now, they are not, uh, they are still 
not um, um, charging Nigerians in Naira. And when you turn in Naira, you compare to the price in dollars. If you have to pay in dollars, it's cheaper than when you pay in Naira. And also, if you have to go to the next uh, next door neighbor, it's cheaper because they feel it's a two-way HS. The way government come up with such policy that will dazzle, that, that will dazzle down the effect of, um, of the um, pressure on the Naira, then you see stability. And again, we, the government also must begin to look at how it can support um, the most talk about uh, NMPC part of Potaco refinery to start uh, delivering of the product that they said they turn around maintenance almost complete in December. But up to this moment, we've not seen a single liter of that. <laughs> Let me begin to see it in the market. That not refinery also, uh, mm. maybe when they come to the market, that also will reduce the pressure because most of the pressure with that, with that uh, is on the Naira is due to the importation of refined petroleum product. Okay, so last week there was a story making headlines and it was talking about how the federal government, you know, was considering banning, you know, all these crypto exchanges to stabilize the Naira. Do you think that's another way where we can, you know, sort out this whole forex situation, forex situation? I think yes, in, in some ways. Um, crypto is part of the financial market. I mean, the U.S. and the U in, in the U.S. Um, crypto, when you want to play crypto, is highly regulated. In the larger economy, crypto is regulated, and so Nigeria should not be an exception. Uh, whereby you just think that they could just operate in Nigeria based on their own criteria. No, in the UK, crypto is not even allowed. In the UK, China does not even allow um, crypto in their economy. So if we are going to allow crypto to begin to, then they must be re they must be regulated, especially when it comes to deal with uh, exchange. Because what we what what we were able to know. I mean, true investigation was that um, the arbitrary rate <laughs> that was also well, was being um, put on this crypto platform. And so they, they really change traders and others normally go to the crypto scrap fund to say, okay, what's, what's the selling today? Yeah. What's the rate? And then they look at that rate and begin to, that's the rate they want to sell to Nigeria. And most of the people that will come to patronize the build the change are those that also play in the space of crypto. Because that's the exchange rate. So they come in, buy for the beauty change, then they, they have to put it in their crypto uh, wallet for them to start trading. So we must regulate that sector. And unfortunately, the, the crypto sector is a sector that is played by the younger generation. So they mm. believe so much in it because of the, the, thing, the, the, the high return, the lack of uh, regulation of it. And so that is one area that government really need to really, if they have to clamp down, they have to clamp down. If they have to call them for a meeting to make them that, look, if you, if you, if you refuse to be regulated, then we ban you out of our, our, of, our uh, of our space. Then that will work. I don't just think they should just be banned outrightly. I think the government should engage them, and um, then from there they must abide by the regulation of, that have been set up by Security and Exchange Commission. And they must be registered if they have to play the Nigerian space. They must be they must be dealt with like uh, dealt with like every other financial instrument. You have to go to Security and Exchange Commission. We have to know who are your board of trustees. We have to know where your office are located. We have to know how your funds are coming in. We have to know how so they need to be regulated. And if they now say no, no we don't want to be regulated, then they can be banned out of our airspace. And, 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 and that also our communication space, and that could also help drive down the, 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 the crisis that we're having. Because uh, as at um, last week, the exchange rate was almost hitting 2,000. But when government came out with this policy, I heard that I think last week the exchange rate was about 1,770. Even if it's still high, the official rate has gone from a high of 1,600 to a, to a high of 1,488. That shows that. Definitely, they could be something uh, in that space that we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. Well, um, on one of our newspapers this morning that we reviewed, um, it's on the business NG, it said that the federal government had, you know, come out to say that the Naira was being stabilized. Um, but you, as an economic analyst, I want you to speak to me right now. Do you think there's a light at the end of the tunnel right now? Do you think, you know, we're coming out of this? Because we're seeing the free fall of the Naira. We're seeing the prices of goods and services being at an all-time high. Um, people can barely feed. People can barely make ends meet. People can barely afford anything. Do you think from your own trajectory or the trends that you've seen, do you think very soon we might just be coming out of this and things will things are looking better for Nigerians? Very soon, I don't know. It is going to happen very soon. Mm. Um, you know, the government has always been positive, and I have said that uh, 
This is the government that we're beginning to see. The more you see, the less you understand. The more you talk, the more you get confused. Uh, mm -hmm. When you say the Naira is being stabilized, I don't know how their stability is. It because the Naira have moved from uh, almost 2,000 to 1,770. 1, 1, that is stabilization. Is it because you have dropped down the exchange, uh, the import exchange duty from 1,600 to 1,488. Uh, 1, Does that mean that is that stability? The stability means because um, so stability is relative to the ordinary man. Stability for a poor man is that I have food on my table and I have it at a, at a very good cost. Um, for the government, stability to them now means that oh, we stabilize the currency. That's majorly one of the well, that's one of the major problems, but that's not the whole of the problem. So the government needs to be clear more the clear policy on stability. Because when you're talking about stability, I, have you gone to the market this week mm. and you see that goods have come down? No. Uh, rather, over the weekend, we had our people went to queue for custom rights, and some people lost their life because of stampede. Yeah. And here we are this morning, the government is saying that, oh, we created stability. Did we create stability on Sunday in the afternoon and so that we go today on Monday and we begin? Stability is in the in, 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 in economic space. It's not, it's not, it's not something that happened overnight and not something that happened in 24 hours not sometimes it's not only that even happened in one month two months three months sometimes not something that happened in a year sometimes it could even take a decade sometimes it could take five years because the way the nether has fallen is it, 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 that like the government was was helpless because mm. it's a government that came to power in, 10, in may and the exchange was about 510 naira when they came to power then they, they floated the currency and it moved and it moved and it moved and it got to you know, it got to almost 2,000 before you begin to know what to do, how to do, how to follow up, <laughs> how to begin to clamp down on this, clamp down on that. The, 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 it, it shows that you didn't even know the grip of the decisions you were taking before. Because mm. if you have a grip of decisions you were taking before, then you have put policy on, on ground to stabilize it. If you come out at the government, I remember that the presidential advice, the chairman of the presidential advice sat on, on, on tax. Told us sometime in last year in September that by December, the exchange rate should be selling between 650 to 700. Mm. And at that December, it went to 1,200. We didn't hear anything from them. The mm -hmm. CBN governor came out and said that Naira as it stands is undervalued, that it should be trading between 700 and 800. And in year it was then, the CBN itself moving the rate to meet up with the parallel market rate from about 900 at that time to, 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 to 1,500. So you mm -hmm. see a government that says something in one hand and does this for the other. So mm. I don't think stability is anything that will be achieved in the shortest possible time. Yeah. I think stability will be achieved as we as we begin to get those supply in, as we begin to come up with policy. One exciting news over the weekend is this presidential advisory committee that was have been set up. And when you look at those yes. committee, you look at men and women of Taliban that do business mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the committee advice will be held by Mr. President. Uh, it will not be a political committee. Remember, the former president of Boston just said, your own is to advise. Mm. Your own is to take, advi take your advice. <laughs> Hopefully, Bola Tinibu will listen to some of his advice yes. that will come up from people that are key players of the economy. All and right. that will help stabilize the economy. Well, I mean, we can only be hopeful that this is the worst we've ever been, the worst we've ever been as a country, but we can only be hopeful that, you know, things will get better. And um, I think we need prayers <laughs> at this point. Um, someone said, all we do is pray in this country, but at this point, we have no other, no other way to turn to. Yes, I agree with you, but again, we must understand, when it comes to spiritual matters, you can pray, <laughs> all right. and God will forgive. Yeah. But when it comes to economic matters, you will pay for the sin that you have well, committed. Well, there are principles, principles that you have to, you have to adhere to. Anyways, I want to say thank you for coming and just, you know, coming to share more light in this conversation. Thank you so much. My pleasure always. Thank you. All right. Okay, we've been speaking to Mukhtar Mohammed. He's an international finance and economic analyst. And we're talking about um, the fact that former, um, well, the presidential candidate for the Labour Party, um, Peter Obi, had come out to say that the clampdown on BDC operators will only worsen the Forex situation. Well, this is what we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you for having the, having the breakfast with me. My name is Rumet Paulson, and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.